In this series of videos you will see how to create light and strong body parts of complex shape, from a photograph or sketch to a finished metal coated composite part. In this part we will analyze in detail whether the best way to prepare a part for electroplating so the application of the couple layer is fast and uniform. Likes and comments below the video, so we begin. In the last video we made a composite part based on matrix printed on a 3D printer. Composite reinforcement from the inside is necessary to provide the desired strength. The coating on the outside is needed not only for decorative purposes, but also in order to achieve the desired hardness of the parts. The hardness video explains in detail the different coating types and their properties, from the simplest and cheapest with acrylic spray paint to awesome carbon fiber and epoxy resin coating. One of the most sophisticated ways is to create a full-fledged metal coating, which not only gives the detail an awesome look, but also has the highest protective properties of all the others. Please do not confuse this technology with chemical plating, chromium effects, spray paints and other methods of imitation of a metal coating that can look like a metal cover, but do not provide such protective properties as real metal. Regardless of which coating you choose for your parts, the surface must first be leveled. Liquid Beauty from a car store is well suited for this. As with all stages, I recommend making test coverage on small probes so as not to spoil the desired part. Comparing different types of aerosol primer and liquid beauties, evaluate their adhesion to the base, hiding power and ease of grinding. After choosing a better option, we move on to leveling our part. We cover the front side with a uniform layer of beauty and leave it to dry. After complete drying, smooth the part with a 400 sandpaper. At this stage, we remove the beauty from the protruding areas and we make sure it remains in the recesses, thus leveling the surface relief. After leveling, we proceed to the creation of equipment and an electrically conductive layer. And this is the stage that I want to devote more time due to the importance of this step for the final result. In order for the surface of the part to be able to participate in the electroplating process and take over the copper from the solution, you need the surface to become electrically conductive. The better the conductivity of the layer, the faster and more uniformly copper will settle on the surface. And here we may encounter significant difficulties. Copper conductive paint is the perfect way for creating a high-quality electrically conductive layer. If you have it, then just spray it on the part and then electrically conductive layer is ready. The problem is that even in those countries where you can get such copper paint, it is insanely expensive and for most of my viewers it is simply not available. A cheaper analog for creating an electrically conductive layer is graphite varnish. But the conductivity of graphite is 10 times worse than copper. If you were interested in the topic of electroplating, you probably noticed that in most cases electroplated is used for small DIY jewelry or dried leaves, for example. For such small jobs, graphite varnish can still be used, but if you try to use it to electroplate paths with the large areas, then due to the low electrical conductivity and high resistance, copper builds on the surface terribly uneven. And while the couple layer hardly reached the middle of the part, huge copper crystals are already growing at the point of contact. Therefore, in order to do without copper paint, but to be able to cover large functional parts with copper, for several months I was engaged only in the topic of creating an optimal and affordable electrically conductive coating, which each of you could make based on the available components. Here is the solution I am using now. First we do something that I by analogy with physiology called innervation. We innervate our part with copper wires, which will receive current. From the inside of the part we make a lot of supply contacts. Since copper during plating grows precisely from the copper contact, the more such growth points, the faster and more even coverage will be. Please note that we use copper enameled winding wire as contacts diameter from 0.2 to 0.5 mm. We only strip 5 mm of insulation from each end, leaving the rest of the wire insulated and this is very important. 
For a quality coating there should be no cathode copper in the electroplating bath at all, because due to the lower resistance it will pull on itself all the copper from the anodes, taking it away from the graphite surface. You can pay attention to this mistake which I made in the first electroplating video. We connect the opposite ends of the wires into one terminal and then, using a multimeter, we check all our nerve endings, if necessary, cleaning them from glue. Such a connection of contacts is painstaking manual work, but so far I haven't found practical tricks that would give better results than this nerve system with graphite. If you know the other ways, please write about them in the comments, because it will save a lot of time. After attaching a lot of contacts, we proceed to create an electrically conductive layer. For decorative use, it would be enough to cover only the front side of the pot. But since we are working on functional parts that will be stressed and friction against other parts, it is better that the copper coating is not only on the front side, but also on the side ends and a little more when on the inside. Then the couple layer will not peel off the ends and in addition will close the edges of the plastic part and the composite as a protective shell. To do this, we stick masking tape on the inside, leaving a 5 mm indent. The entire area not covered with a tape will be covered with an electrically conductive layer and then with copper. For such details it is better to use masking tape for curved lines, which is ideal for parts with complex geometries. After that we apply spray graphite varnish to the part, focusing on points of contact. The varnish dries very quickly, and here we come to the problem of conductivity. Even when applying the most expensive graphite varnish for $36 per 200 gram in full accordance with the instructions, its conductivity is in the range of 3 to 5 kilo ohm per centimeter. This is terribly low electrical conductivity. And if you try to build up copper with such a surface resistance, then the tightening with copper will take many hours and as a result, until the middle of the part is only slightly tightening with copper, the edges will already resemble copper corals. The best solution I have found so far is the following. A couple of minutes after applying graphite varnish, when it is still tacky, we apply graphite powder to the surface with a soft makeup brush. Gently and softly, so as not to tear off the varnish, we apply powder on all surfaces, also paying special attention to the ends and contact points. And after two hours, when the varnish is completely dry, we take a soft cloth, which leaves no lint behind, and polish the surface to a graphite sheen. With this combination of graphite in the form of varnish and powder, we lower the resistance from 5 kilo ohm per centimeter to less than 1 kilo ohm per centimeter. Moreover, the cheapest graphite varnish is also suitable for such a combination for only $7 per 200 grams. And most importantly, this method allows you to achieve a uniform copper coating of a large area without hard to reach copper paint. Which means using the electroplating method of applying a metal coating in garage conditions not only for DIY toys, but for large functional parts. If this video was helpful to you, of course it was, click the like, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the next videos in which we will cover this part with a protective metal layer. Good luck with your own projects and see you soon!